Mark Rogers TV back with you as we wrap up the first round of the 2014 NFL Draft picks 23 through 32. Let's uh, kick it off with Kansas City taking D Ford out of Auburn. So the Chiefs sitting at 23 and possibly waiting for Johnny Manziel to fall into their lap. But Andy Reid, no, not a quarterback this time. We know Reid loves the passing game, but he does not get a quarterback. We don't know for sure if the Chiefs were waiting for a quarterback, waiting for Manziel, but the Cleveland Browns made another play in this first round of the NFL draft and jumped up to 22 to grab the former Heisman Trophy winner. So the Chiefs settle for another SEC player. D. Ford coming off the edge at defensive end for the SEC champion Auburn Tigers. D. Ford, a very dynamic player, undersized, a quick, smaller defensive end. But in today's NFL, much of the defensive end position, outside linebacker position, undersized compared to what we saw 10 or 15 years ago in the league. D. Ford gets after the quarterback. He makes, pl makes plenty of plays in the opponent's backfield. He's a very smart player. He doesn't get fooled much. He stays on the backside of plays and cleans it up from that side as well. D. Ford is a player that challenged his Auburn defensive teammates, knowing that the offense was good enough to win a championship early in the season. The Tigers were getting roughed up, still winning games, but getting roughed up against some inferior opponents, and they got drubbed by LSU, giving up 28 points in the first half, losing to the LSU Tigers 35-21, and D. Ford stepped up and said, hey, defense, the offense is carrying us, and we want to win an SEC championship. Nobody thinks we can do it, starting 0-8 last season and making this kind of turnaround, but we know in this locker room that we can do it, and the defense played much better down the stretch. Yeah, gave up some points, against some big opponents like Missouri in the SEC championship game, but the Auburn Tigers making it all the way to the BCS championship game and much to the credit of D. Ford going to the Kansas City Chiefs. And number 24, Cincinnati takes Darkes Denard out of Michigan State. We anticipated that the best cornerback in the Big Ten and possibly the best in college football would go much higher than this, but he drops to 24 in Cincinnati. The Bengals have three players in the secondary, mostly playing at cornerback of ages of over 30. So they need some youth in the defensive secondary, and they get a very tough, very hard-nosed player in Darquez Denard. He plays very physically. The officials are going back toward the trend of letting these guys play a little bit in the secondary, and Darquez Denard can certainly step up to that challenge and take on big physical NFL receivers. He's not that tall. He's a typical college cornerback going to the NFL in terms of his height, but again, very physical off the line of scrimmage, and he will challenge NFL receivers off the ball. Number 25, San Diego takes Jason Barrett, another defensive player, the cornerback who was the Big 12 defensive player out of the year out of TCU. Philadelphia trades up, uh, moving into Indianapolis's spot. The Eagles select Marcus Smith, a defensive end out of Louisville, who didn't catch a whole lot of accolades from the crowd or applause from the crowd. This um, pick not very popular at Radio City Music Hall, but we heard the analysis on the set. Marcus Smith, uh, really a fine talent with Louisville, and he's a very sound football player, a guy that, again, is not going to make a big splash in the headlines. The name recognition's not there, but Marcus Smith on tape is very, very sound, and his technique is polished. He played under Charlie Strong, one of the best defensive minds and technicians from the coaching perspective in college football. All right, Arizona trading down with New Orleans, so the Saints jump up to 20, swap picks with the Cardinals, and the Saints took Brandon Cooks out of Oregon State, the wide receiver. The Cardinals drop down to 27. They snatch up Deion Buchanan, 78 stops at Washington State from his safety position. Deion Buchanan, talk about challenging receivers. This guy is, will stop a little bit short of calling him a headhunter, but he goes for the big hit. Sometimes to his um, detriment, especially in today's NFL, not being able to go for the big hit, having to watch the targeting, the launching, those sorts of plays, Deion Buchanan may have to change much of his game, even though that's being watched in the collegiate game as well. Deion Buchanan has other skills. He is not fearful for mixing it up with bigger, much more physical players as attested by the analysis we just gave. 
and also 78 stops out of the safety position. And he also was a very solid cover guy at that position, but fell a little bit uh, dropping under the tier of the Ha Ha Clint Dix safety position, where Ha Ha Clint Dix is a little bit better in regards to the catching the guys and uh, playing sideline to sideline from the safety position and covering there and also supplying the run support. Deion Buchanan, uh, not quite the cover guy at safety, even though he picks off a lot of passes and did so at Washington State. All right, at 28, Carolina takes Kelvin Benjamin. Of course, caught the game-winning touchdown in the BCS National Championship game, a route that he really took to his advantage, his size, both height and strength and size and frame, and uh, really uh, abused uh, the Auburn secondary in that championship game, specifically on that play, and that's the type of play he will excel at in the NFL in the red zone where he can square up the defender, shield him off, and pretty much block out the sun, catch the football in the red zone for scoring points. Kelvin Benjamin out of Florida State going to Carolina. He will be a main target of Cam Newton coming up in 2014. The New England Patriots at 29 take um, a very interesting pick here. They like Brandon Sykes. They like uh, Florida players there at New England, evidently, and they take another one in Dominic Easley. Uh, This kid, when he's on the field, makes plays. They line him up all over the defensive front in Gainesville, and he's made plays, again, at the defensive tackle position, defensive end. They've moved him around to try to freelance him to make some plays in the opponent's backfield, and when he's there on the field, he does. Much concern is the torn ACL. I'm sure that the New England Patriots coaching staff, Mr. Belichick and company, has made sure that that is as sound as possibly it can be checked at this point. The torn ACL, and he's had some other injury uh Injuries plague him throughout his career at Florida. Dominic Easley going to New England at 29. The San Francisco 49ers jump up to the 30th position, and they take the first, we don't want to say small college player because he played the MAC. He played major college football, actually played in the Orange Bowl following the 2012 season against Florida State. But it's Northern Illinois' Jimmy Ward at safety. All the scouting reports on him is that this kid has very, very solid technique. He challenges the football. Uh, He comes up and runs support. He led his team in total tackles at Northern Illinois in 2013 as um, that school once again vied for a BCS berth late in the season before falling off and losing the MAC championship game and then their bowl game against Utah State. All right, we move on to the last two spots of the first round of the NFL draft. Denver taking Bradley Roby out of Ohio State, and I don't think I saw more derogatory comments against any player in this first round that I did against Bradley Roby. Yes, his spotlight game for him, well, it could have been Michigan State late in the season. It could have been Clemson if he would have been on the field for Ohio State against Clemson in the Orange Bowl. But it was early in the season against Wisconsin and Jared Abraderis, a very talented, very skilled a uh, very sound wide receiver for Wisconsin, and he took Bradley Roby to school. Jared Abraderis, uh, especially on the double moves, really made Roby look silly. He caught passes for over 200 yards. So we're talking about a Wisconsin team without a number two threat at wide receiver. Nobody opposite the field on Jared Abraderis. And with a marginal quarterback in Joel Stave, still was able to get Jared Abraderis loose for over 200 yards matched up on Bradley Roby. Roby came to Ohio State as a very highly touted player out of high school in Georgia and immediately became a star as a freshman, progressed as a sophomore, and then that junior season just wasn't what we expected in the Big Ten as Bradley Roby actually had a better 2012 Had he been able to come out to the NFL draft, he probably would have been a top 10 or 15 pick in the NFL draft. But still not too bad. He's a very, very talented player who will help you on special teams as well. He blocks kicks. He returns kicks as well. But inconsistent, not just in coverage, but in the open field, missing tackles against players who we will not see play on Sundays. So that has to be a concern for the Denver Broncos hear that Bradley Roby missing tackles consistently against, again, players in the Big Ten that will not be making a paycheck in the NFL. But they thought enough of him, especially at this value position of 31 for the Broncos to take Bradley Roby in that position. And to finish off the first round, 
Big splash by the Minnesota Vikings in selecting Teddy Bridgewater at number 32, the quarterback out of Louisville. So the Vikings at number eight in the first round were expected to uh, be possibly wanting Blake Bortles to drop to them, certainly. And then if Bortles wasn't there to go for another quarterback, most notably Johnny Manziel, but they didn't do it. They passed on Johnny Manziel. They actually traded out of that one spot position. The Browns passed on Manziel. And then the Vikings passed on Manziel. And then they got their quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. Had this draft been conducted a day after the college football season was completed with no workouts in play, it's possible that Teddy Bridgewater would have been the top overall player selected in this draft. Possibly number two to Jadavian Clowney and certainly in the top 10. The pro day was a disaster for his career, at least getting the big contract and being selected high in the first round. And when the coaches and the scouts really broke down the tape, there was a lot of stuff that they didn't like out of Teddy Bridgewater. He doesn't have the big arm. He doesn't have huge size. He's not prototype size, i.e. Blake Bortles. And again, he doesn't have the gun. He can't make all the throws, but we've seen other quarterbacks come into the league and improve their arm strength. That will be expected of Teddy Bridgewater if he wants to have a long and illustrious career in the NFL. Otherwise, he's going to be a fringe starter and a possible backup in the NFL. But he's smart and he's a good kid, the type kid that you root for. And he's also played with injuries in the past. In 2012, he came down the stretch with a busted ankle and a busted shoulder and a bad elbow. And he led the Louisville Cardinals to the Sugar Bowl, went to the BCS against the highly favored Florida team, and he pulled off the upset against what I considered at the time to be the top defense in college football. Teddy Bridgewater to Minnesota at pick 32. Now we would love to hear from you. Let's get your comments and analysis on the back half of the first round right here on Mark Rogers TV.